Hey everyone, wanted to do a review of the market today. I've been asked by a couple of folks in Discord to show what I go through when I do the various analysis of the tick and trend and how I use those to look for setups uh, during the day. So typically on a nice day where there's decent volume, there's not a lot of uh, news that we're waiting for, I will trade on the two minute time frame, sometimes five minute. If it's a slow day, but we're still trending, I may just stick to five minute. But today was actually a very good day for two minute. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I'm gonna break down kind of the, uh, the session into three uh, sections. So uh, if you've been trading for any amount of time, most likely you've heard of you know the fact that the volatility the the volume and the strength of moves is typically there for the first hour of market maybe a little longer lunchtime typically you'll see a slow uh, slow down in, in volatility and volume and price action uh, which then will pick up as the day progresses past lunch say around one o'clock uh, and then certainly that last hour or last 30 minutes of the day there's you know there typically can be a good move uh, today uh, may 12th 2023 we open up on spy which is typically the the uh, market that i trade and monitor uh, closely <clears throat> we open up uh, with a gap up so the other video that i introduced market internals and the first video on this channel uh, I, I described that a gap up scenario oftentimes means that if, if you're using the market internals to determine uh, to determine direction and trend for the day typically best to wait and just see what happens because all of the data will be skewed for the market internals and uh, the market as a whole, I find, will digest the gap and, you know, decide where we're going. So you can see just here on trend, we have this massive candle. We, we closed the day prior, May 11th, down at the $1 price, which if you recall, if you've watched the other video, which you, you should, before watching this one, uh, this is the balance area on trend. So we close around a dollar, and then today when we opened up, I mean that the bar skyrockets up to you know almost two on this wick uh, specifically up up around two. The tick, similar story, it's jacked way up high, so up in the uh, extreme bullishness area overbought you know however you want to word it and then you know puts versus calls kind of the same thing where we closed yesterday around 0.71 ratio all the way to uh, just dumping off right we we hit down here at uh, 0.6 so just a lot of big move big gap uh, that needs to be digested you know there's just no context until you wait and see kind of what the what the market is going to do next for this move that this isn't a trending kind of move that tells you hey sentiment has changed the market's made a decision to do something different this is just <laughs> you know overnight futures adjustment on price or, or whatever and you you can't make a decision off of this maybe one of the only decisions that i, I hesitate to use the word safe but could be a safer assessment is when there's a gap up like this and the tick is at the high uh, overbought region and trend is in the, the upper you know bearish area both of these I mean this is potentially oversold but tick is saying potentially overbought you know it could be a short which in this case it was but there are other days where it would not have been one thing that I'm going to introduce in this video is anytime there's an extreme on the tick, I will make a note of the price on whatever it is I'm trading. 
which you know all of this typically these market internals are mostly applicable to trading highly liquid ETF sentiment following uh, markets like the Q's, SPY, maybe some of the spider ETFs, obviously the futures market ES, NQ, YM, uh, the Russ. The, and the reason being is this is measuring again. Uh, if you haven't seen the first video, I explained this. It's measuring the New York Stock Exchange, the entire basket of stocks. So it affects the ETFs, the main indices, the most. So when you see moves here, you can almost be guaranteed to see something happen on the ETF. So it makes sense to read these and use them for, for trading the ETFs, the indexes. So anyways, so when I see an extreme move on tick, I will draw that level on SPY. So right here at the open, I see, okay, we're at uh, you know this upper extreme area. I'm making note of that level because at that moment the index is trading at an extreme area and there was a strong push to be at that price so then what I'm looking for is trades around this level potentially break up or break down in the direction of trend as well as add and volt potentially we could be in a, a bullish scenario because the volume is in the, the beginning stages of being bullish uh, in the bullish region. It's above zero. All of the stocks in ad in the NYSE, they are uh, advancing, right? Or have advanced from yesterday's close. So again, though, because this is large gap here, that's not very convincing to say that the entire exchange is in an advancing mode of operation because we just started the day. So with that being said, you know, I'm also keeping, keeping an eye on volatility, puts and calls, just still making notes. So it's really important when you're using the internals or anything in trading is you don't make snap judgments, especially at open. Um, it's just usually a bad time. So these tools are here to help you observe the markets and become more attuned to what moves they're making here and how they align to the entire breadth of the, the market. If you're a market internal trader, you're, you're totally content watching these extremes, taking note of the data in the form of a price level, and just observing for that next move because this is all helping build a story to determine how to position for a really good trade. So another thing that I will do is I, I tend to kind of visualize the tick in chunks, so boxes and, and lines. I will um, take like all of these candles, and I, I mentioned this in the previous video, I tend to notice the, cl the clustering of the candles. So we've got this whole section here that's spending the majority of the time below zero, pegging the 500, the, the 800 in a couple of instances, right? You can, when you start watching this, you can kind of see the, the waves and the clustering and how we have these sentiment changes where for, for a while we'll, we'll have candles up here then we'll have a break below zero, and then finally we'll spend most of our time below zero, negative 500, 800, right? And then if it's a day that's kind of range bound, we'll oscillate. We'll spend time down here, we'll break up, and then we'll spend time up here, and just so on and so forth. On trending days, this the the day we had today is a perfect example of a of kind of a trending day, which we did have a trending day for the majority of the, the day. What you'll see if it's a trend down is, you know, stocks move typically in waves. They don't just go straight up or straight down. So you'll see this pattern where the, the stock will come up, or sorry, the tick will come up, the tick will come back down, 
and then we'll have a, a box a chunk of candles all under zero for the most part right they'll, they'll have little bits above but mostly under okay and then we'll spend majority time under zero if it's a trend down and then look you got the same thing here and right back down okay so you you get the idea I'm not gonna box in all these so pay attention to that and and understand the significance of that through repeated observation that's that's my recommendation okay so so we're seeing um, in the morning that 500 is kind of the resistance for the day okay we see 800 is somewhat the support and you know I kind of hate using those terms but um, just because this isn't really a stock but it is the way it moves actually so it's a cumulative um, tick of the New York Stock Exchange hitting a brick wall for whatever reason for whichever stocks they are they're hitting a brick wall they can't push any higher uh, it, to the point where it equates to a 500 area on tick it's just how it works same thing for the the negative 800 they can't down tick any more than this level for whatever reason and it might not even be the same stocks uh, from this 500 to this 500 that can't push any higher when you start to see these uh, 500 hits and they're acting as resistance so like right here we had very strong wicks right here you can start to take note again of those levels so if it's a high tick extreme I will typically plot the price at the the high end uh, be it the open or the close if it's a bullish candle open if it's a bearish candle on spy and I'll plot those levels here right because I'm, I'm trying to see what is going on with these extreme moves are these extreme bullish moves being accepted in the price of whatever it is I'm trading or is that an exhaustion and we're about ready to reject that area to come lower so again this is where you don't need to take the very first extreme trades you see and try to invert every one of them we don't even know if it's a trending day or a ranging day or if it's just a crap day where you should just walk away um, so we're just taking notes we're taking data there's so much time in the day just chill out watch for opportunities to, to manifest and, and build let the market tell you where the opportunity is going to be okay so then we got this next section here from about 10 uh, all the way to 11 and again we've got eight negative 800 negative 800 negative 800 we got a bunch of them right so where are they okay well here's some looks like we've got more price levels here and we got another one here so great so we've got a handful of levels here yeah you could say we missed the dump here which sure you maybe could have caught that I've definitely caught some earlier this week uh, making some uh, snap kind of gut based decisions on okay 500 looks like it's it we already had our extreme I'll, I'll try a short right and maybe I'll go one third size or or however you manage your risk sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes it blows up in my face so you just you really have to become nuanced at reading this before you start making those kinds of trades so I'm trying to show you the quote unquote safer way of doing it okay so it's by um, let's see here okay so by 10 o'clock we have a handful of levels. I'm gonna draw a little price or a timeline here. Okay, so by 10, we have a handful of levels that are going to be significant for our structure and defining how this day is going to go. So from this point on, we wanna see what price does in this area and what price does above or below these levels and these levels here we're also going to continue to keep an eye on tick we want to see is it going to start boxing and clumping candles above zero or is it going to continue to, to box them 
in chunk is uh, you know below zero because the entire New York Stock Exchange is just selling off right again this is early day we, we've only spent 30 minutes into the market creating somewhat of a loose structure you know all we know is that we sold off from uh, you know about a, a dollar and a half which is not bad if you caught that congratulations so here we see a bunch of consolidation right around this level and you can take note in the fact that we have not accepted this 41230 level we have not even tested these levels here and you can look over here at trend so by 10 o'clock you can see that we have stayed in that bearish area also by 10 o'clock the puts versus calls basically I'll say starting to trend up which means more puts are being loaded being traded than than calls and by 10 the VIX and, and I love the VIX for this kind of I, I, I will look at its direction but I look more as an as a decision factor I look more in what is it doing around key levels so 18 we can see it's not going any lower so to me when it, volatility when it volatility is rising fear is typically rising the index spy the Q mostly going down VIX up that's bearish so we've accepted eight price 18 and you know we're starting to head up some so that's all of just these right here have me considering uh, more of a short-sighted bias for at least right at this time of day also the fact that we started at the high end of tick we consolidated and clumped a bunch of candles above zero and we started a print below if we look at volt by 10 o'clock we have not advanced up at all okay we we haven't we're not trending up into a further bullish territory and by 10 on the the ad the ADD the advancing and declining stocks we're we're actually headed down okay so this is another important thing to take note of is when the ad and the volt are diverging so here the volt is yeah, somewhat going up coming back down going back up coming back down it's this is consolidation there's no new highs there's no new lows and at the same time though the the ad is starting to come down okay now it is making similar moves as volt but you notice it's not making that same high with this high here as the vold did see the vold came right back up to previous high the ad did not it's actually a slight downtrend and certainly by by 10 it's it's definitely you know headed down it's making new uh, lower lows so it's just a bearish across the board so this is the important context of the internals is even though they're in the bear, uh, bullish zone they're they're starting high but they're headed down they're starting in the bullish area but they're heading towards the bearish area so you always you know you got to start from one area to get to the next area so it's not always automatically a buy just because things are in the bull zone and that's where like I said in my previous video the trend is incredibly important because and it was kind of my missing link is when it's in the bear zone it's really not a great idea to try longs um, unless you really start to see the trend selling off or headed down right it does have to go through the balance zone in order to get down to the, the bull zone right which we would then expect the ad and the vold since this is using that data we would expect these guys to be trending up but it's it's not right it's it's mostly sideways consolidating and it's staying at that 1.5 and higher price which indicates because it's an indicator that it's a short biased market today which it was as we can see one of the entries that I took today and it's it's a really good one 
uh, I feel, is when we can mostly uh, discern that the tick, a, a particular tick level is acting as resistance, where the majority of stocks are pushing, but there's no further advancement, meaning it's just a pop, a false break, whatever you want to call it, before there's going to be a, a, an opposite move, in this case a downward move. So I have been drawing these levels, and one of the trades uh, that I took was a, a break into this area here. Now for me, I do use moving averages, so I had started to average in here, watching these wicks here and seeing that we're not breaking this level. Grabbed a nice uh, scalp down. Now as soon as I see this first engulf around the 200, personally some additional things that I use, I, I exited. Now I'm still watching these levels. There was another fantastic rejection off of this engulf. Look exactly where it hit. It hit on this price level that we drew from where tick hit an extreme low at negative 800. See? And that's why I use the open, uh, the opening price or the close price, whichever is lower on this candle, whenever we hit an extreme down here on tick. Okay? So it wicked perfectly right at 412.01. You can even see the high price, 412.01, boom, reject right around some other area uh, things of confluence that I look for, rejection of 200, we got another short trade, right? But, and we can comfortably hold it because there, there's no reason not to. We're, we're below zero, you know, the trend is in the bearish zone. So you can also see that this pop here perfectly equated with these lines I drew, like where I say, every time it comes up into here, we're now we're waiting. Is this a sentiment change? Are we flipping from uh, bearish to bullish? Or is this just a relief bounce before lower, right? And this is exactly what this was. We see a pop, comes right back down, and look what happens. We just start chunking a ton of candles right under zero on tick. We're hitting these extremes. And again, all these price levels, every time we see these extremes, you don't have to do every one of them. You know, draw draw more price levels because they're important, and I see them work all the time. Case in point, look at this. We hit an extreme right at uh, 11.14. Boom. That was essentially the end of the move. Makes sense, right? The entire exchange is pushing down hard. It's hit an extreme area, at least right now. In 2023, this is an extreme price. It, it goes, it can go lower right it can go negative 2000 positive 2000 i haven't showed you guys that but that it can go that far typically it will not right now the consolidation continues right and look it's hugging that price look what happens we get another relief bounce up to 500 again we already know from earlier in the day because we've been patient and we've watched the structure we know 500 for the most part we can expect that it's probably going to be over for the bulls on this day at 500. And look what happens. Fat rejection bar. We see it right here. Boom. Right back in to short town. And it just keeps going. Right? We hit another extreme tick movement. Negative 1,000. What do we do? We can record that price. Okay. So this is just something I wanted to show and uh, explain to people kind of how I use it. And this day, today was, was pretty easy uh, because every time relief bounce, break back under the tick extreme level, hop in, scalp, relief bounce, break, hop in, done. And I mean, it just works so many times today. So yeah, this, this just continues on. Today is a perfect example of, of this exact system and Again, you can be patient because you know you've got the, the edge of the internals. You can see where the reactions are going to be. You've recorded them, and you just wait. You watch. You let the market come to you. You watch for those relief bounces on a trending day, and then you enter, and you can have the confidence to hold it at least until the next extreme move is made. Then you trim, and you move your stops, or you full exit, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, however you manage your risk, I'm not here to tell you that, but that's effectively how I do it. Midday, you know, I typically don't trade as much because I don't find the volume, the price action to be all that swell. 
but I will still make note of any extreme tick levels. So 800 typically is, you know, was the area today. Uh, and so we had, a, we had a whole cluster of them down here and I just uh, took a price level, tossed it here, potentially watch for a reversal today uh, near the end of the market. Watching tick, I just patiently watched it and we see yep, more relief bounces. We're still primarily uh, chunking right under zero. Then we start to see an adjustment. Look how many candles all of a sudden are starting to be above zero. So you don't have to start here. You don't have to take a long here just because we had one chunk. You can wait and watch and observe. I had other criteria I'm not going to go into in this video of things that I use. Nice and golf here. Chunking over zero. 500 still kind of acting as, as resistance, but zero now acting as support. Yes, we do have these wicks here, but fair enough to, to take an entry. You, uh, you could start, if you're a shares trader, or even if you're an options contract trader and you're using multiple contracts, you know, you can grab a couple uh, lots down here. So that would have got you a really great price. You would have never been read the entire trade for the rest of the day. It's up to you how you enter and exit, but you can see here already we have a huge chunk of candles in the bullish area on tick. This isn't great strong bullishness, but this is just what a trending bull move will look like because it's not extreme. It's just healthily moving up. Not a big deal, right? We do have one here, and you can see what happens. We have a huge engulf break right through the 200 SMA, and look what happens. We have that cooling off. Important to notice that the cooling off was short-lived. Didn't make much of a difference to SPY on its overall price. And then look what happens. It just continues right on up to the end of the day. So, I mean, this day was textbook for understanding trending moves and, you know, moves that were sustained with decent momentum. Perfect day. Highly recommend reviewing this day, practicing observing drawing these levels and uh, you'll you know you'll definitely pick it up the more you look at this but uh, hopefully this helps somebody looking at this data uh, can't recommend these tools enough uh, we'll be making another video I, I created an indicator for trading view that actually makes it much simpler to monitor all of this information such that you don't have to have all these charts up um, I think it's going to be a game changer for folks that are invested in market internals and learning the way that I recommend using them to trade. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, good luck, happy trading. Thanks for watching the video.